All right, I'm pretty sick today, which means I've actually been doing a lot of reading. Uh, that's kind of what I do when I'm sick, is I, I read a lot of it. It brings me comfort, especially old stuff like Savage Dragon. This is the uh, Image uh, Ultimate Collection. It's oversized art. It's in color. And uh, this is the first time that this stuff's been collected in a long time. So uh, Eric Larson did uh, some hardcovers back in the day. They were very limited. I, I had the first one, uh, and they, they, he didn't go all the way through. He went up through... I think five hardcovers, if I recall, uh, before he just went into trade paperbacks and kind of ignoring uh, the bigger collected editions. But then um, he also did an archives Savage Dragon, which was in black and white. So they were printed on like that. Uh, it was like the uh, what were those called back in the day by Marvel and D uh, the DC showcase books where they recollected all their stuff on this like cheap newsprint, black and white, so easy to print. It's a good way to kind of catch up with the character and get in on things, but it was not uh, up to the standards of modern collected editions. So I already have the dust jacket off, but it's the exact same as uh, the cover. And you get some nice art in here. Now, one thing that grinds my gears about these kind of things, <laughs> uh, and this collects the Dragon or the original Savage Dragon miniseries 1 through 5 and Savage Dragon 1 through 8 and uh, some backup stories in there. Uh, it's introduction by Robert Kirkman, who's a big Savage Dragon fan. I've known that before. This is not a new revelation. And Savage Dragon is a guy who's uh, lost his memory. He just shows up one day. And, uh, and then gets uh, kind of brought in by the police force. And they say, hey, uh, we have a bunch of super freaks to deal with, and we need, uh, we need somebody as badass as you to kind of handle things. Uh, and that's about it. So he, uh, he starts immediately getting into these entanglements with a lot of blood and guts and gore. And, uh, you know, he, started, he, he gets giant machine guns. Uh, and, of course, it's, uh, it's just awesome, like, no-holds-barred action uh, all the way through. Now, some of the stuff is a little bit disjointed. Uh, he's got a guy uh, named Frank Darling, who's like the police officer who brings him in. He starts dating a girl. She ends up getting shot. It ends up being a conspiracy. Um, and, of course, uh, he he kind of like loses his his way through this. And uh, and Eric Larson just kind of introduces too many characters, uh, is what I got to say. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people do this with their comics. I've done this uh, with my books. I love the... I love the, the the action sequences Larson does in these early issues here are just phenomenal. And I love all these giant uh, uh, sound effects uh, that he puts on here. It's part of the hallmark of the series, which looks awesome. And it's so good in color. I got to tell you, like, the color uh, is so much better than um, reading these in black and white. But uh, basically, there's this vicious circle, they're called. And they are like this syndicate of bad guys uh, and... They're being led by a guy named Overlord, uh, who's kind of like basically Doctor Doom, and uh, he's got a bunch of people out there, and he's he's just like running this whole crime deal. And event, as it goes through here, Overlord's plans to like mess with Savage Dragon get uh, upheld, and Savage Dragon gets some losses. He he loses his girlfriend in very Peter Parker esque manner right away, uh, and then they start bringing in these. Uh, they call them the Freak Force, uh, which is a bunch of new characters. Uh, to help him fight crime uh, as as a superhero, and uh, and so they do so. This is Dart right here in a big, oversized spread. He uh, Eric Larson loves these big spreads, <laughs> and uh, there's several different characters, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Here's a double page spread where Image Comics actually had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles running at the time, and uh, Frank Fosco drew that uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, that run from Image Comics, a lot darker than a lot of the new turtle stuff uh but it was really good and they crossed over with savage dragon and vice versa in that and i'm glad he got i'm glad uh what's nice about this is he has the rights to reprint this uh because you know some sometimes the rights are a little hard to get um and if you look at like uh spawn uh the spawn reprints recently are, are missing that one issue uh because of a crossover and it causes problems a lot of references to other image comics in here like wildcats young blood um, it, it, they were trying to build really their own superhero universe. And, uh, even though that kind of fell apart, uh, the early issues had a lot of that crossover stuff, which is a lot of fun. Um, now this is an obvious like red skull sort of, uh, homage here. And if you go into all the characters, really knowing comic history, uh, helps you a lot here because there's so many references here that Eric Larson makes <laughs> with all his stuff. Uh, even, uh, even going down to, there's a character named Peter Davidson, which is obviously, or Pete Davidson, which is obviously, uh, named after Peter David, uh, who, uh, of course, uh, was working on Hulk for a long time. And uh, so interesting stuff through all of this here. A lot of action. It eventually, like, the Freak Force kind of uh, gets goes off on their own. I know they got their own series. Uh, there's been a Mighty Man. Who is he? He's showing up 
uh, like sort of mystery building throughout all of this as well. And there's so many plot threads. It's like every character I could just stop for a second and give a big plot thread. Eventually, uh, Savage Dragon uh, goes with his police partner who, you know, spoilers, gets uh, killed here uh, in this double page spread uh, against Overlord in the last issue. And uh, and Savage Dragon looks like he gets killed also. Uh, and every page is a splash page on this issue, very much like Death of Superman. Um, so again, like a lot of references here and that stuff. Eventually, Savage Dragon pulls himself off that pole. I remember reading that as a kid and being like, wow, that's brutal. I was shocked by it. Um, and then Officer Dragon's missing for a little bit. And uh, we're setting up. He gets found by some bad dudes. And, uh, and it kind of sets up the next arc. Now, one thing I didn't like about this is they put all the covers at the back. I would have very much liked having all of these like in issue order, like so that you know what issue you're in. I hate it when collected editions do this because it's like it doesn't give you that stopping point when you when you don't have that sort of stuff. But uh, beyond that, Eric Larson gives all these character sketches, all this backup stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of backup stories with the, like Mighty Man and uh, different different characters. He shows like some of the history of Savage Dragon. Uh, really good collection, uh, other than the fact that those, uh, those, uh, were put there. Now I have a soft spot for this. I, I had a lot of these issues when I was a kid. I didn't have all of them. And, uh, even though, uh, I would say that there's some points in the storytelling that are a little disjointed. I I'd say that the, the over the top action and fun makes up for it. And, uh, I enjoy the art. I enjoy like, especially those, just those action scenes. Nobody could draw that like Larson, just good stuff. And uh, this is a 9 out of 10 from me and really enjoyable. And I hope they start coming out with these faster. Image has been doing one a year. I know Volume 2 just came out as of this recording. But my gosh, uh, these need to come out way faster than this. <laughs> Please fix that. All right. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit the like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.